In other news, a recent report by Bloomberg reveals a staggering surge in global clean energy investment, but also energy transition investment trends in 2024. Electrified transport, renewable energy and supply chain investments took the spotlight, but all eyes are on emerging sectors such as hydrogen, carbon capture and energy storage, as these are all seeing substantial growth as well. Abdul Vehab Ayupi has the details. The world is witnessing a remarkable shift towards clean energy, as global investment in the sector has skyrocketed by 17% in 2023. According to the Bloomberg's ENEF report, an eye-watering $1.8 trillion was invested, marking a new record high. Renewable energy, electric vehicles, hydrogen and carbon capture played a significant role in attracting capital. This surge in investment on clean energy transition is taking place despite geopolitical turbulences, high interest rates and cost inflation. Electrified transport emerged as the largest sector for spending, with a remarkable 36 percent increase to $634 billion. This includes investments in the electric cars, buses, two- and three-wheelers, as well as the necessary charging infrastructure. Renewable energy sector investments also grew by 8 percent to reach $623 billion, supporting the construction of wind, solar, geothermal power plants and biofuels production facilities. China is leading the world in clean energy investment, pouring an impressive $676 billion in 2023 accounting for 38 percent of the global total. However, the report reveals a shift in momentum as the European Union, United States and United Kingdom collectively invested more than China, a feat they hadn't achieved in the previous year. Investment in the clean energy supply chain also reached a record $135 billion globally in 2023, with expectations of further growth to $259 billion by 2025 while electrified transport, renewable energy and supply chain investment took the spotlight, emerging sectors such as hydrogen, carbon capture and storage and energy storage experienced substantial growth as well. Despite this remarkable increase in investment, current levels are still inadequate to achieve global net zero targets. To align with Paris Climate Agreement of Net Zero Scenario, an average annual investment of $4.8 trillion from 2024 to 2030 is needed. This highlights the urgency for policymakers to take determined action. Climate-focused companies face challenges in rising capital, with equity figures dropping in the past two years due to rising interest rates. However, clean energy-focused companies managed to raise the most equity in 2023 at $49 billion. In terms of energy transition debt insurance, companies and governments raised a substantial $824 billion in 2023, reflecting a 4% increase from the previous year. While these investment figures show that the world is taking significant steps toward a greener future, it also serves as a wake-up call for even greater funding and policy support to achieve global net zero targets. Abdul UP, TRT World. And now let's bring in Bob Ward, who is a Policy and Communications Director at the London School of Economics. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, right, so why, we've just heard from the report uh, by our colleague, why is China investing more than the US and Europe? We know that actually uh, China is, is really losing momentum uh, right now. How are they able to finance all that? And do you think Europe, Europe should do more when it comes to investments in renewable energies? Well, China is the world's largest producer of carbon dioxide emissions, which is the main driver of climate change. It's the world's second largest economy after the United States. Mm -hmm. And so it is it making these investments for two reasons. First, China recognises its vulnerability and exposure to the impacts of climate change, sea level rise, changes in extreme weather, which threaten to undermine the amazing uh, growth out of poverty for much of its population. Secondly, China recognises that the clean energy economy is the future and it 
not only creates huge opportunities domestically for China, it also will be an opportunity for them to corner the market in green energy technologies and have exports around the world. So it can be a, a real driver of its future growth. And that's the reason China is investing so heavily. Right. Interesting. We've seen a nice chart in that report as well, but we haven't really mentioned the Gulf. I do want to ask you, what about the Gulf countries? Because these countries are heavily invested in oil and gas. Obviously, uh, they really want to diversify away from oil. For now, only Dubai has really succeeded. Uh, don't you think there's scope there for more investments as well? And I'm speaking about Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait as well, the UAE. Yes. Well, every country's got to do more because we're simply not on track to meet our climate change targets. And the consequences of missing those targets will be very severe, already uh, costing us growing amounts of money. So in the Gulf region, of course, uh, there's been a lot of uh, oil and gas for them to use not only to power their own economy, but uh, of course, exports overseas. But they also have huge amounts of sunlight for most of the year and the potential for them developing a huge solar energy grid is enormous. And I think they're starting to recognize it. They're starting to make those investments. But at the moment, it's still very cheap to use oil and gas in the Gulf region. And they're going to have to accelerate away. I think what we might see is two stages that first they grow their own solar energy and other renewable energy market and reserve uh, much of their oil and gas for overseas exports. But eventually that market is going to reduce as the world moves away from oil and gas and they will have to diversify mm -hmm. their economies much more broadly. Right, a quick question, just because we are running out of time, but I do want to ask you, there are different kinds of renewable energies. Which ones are more easily exploitable? Which remain complicated? Well, solar and wind are more established. We know how to use the technologies uh, more. Hydropower, of course, is a renewable technology. But the ones that uh, have the potential to grow are things like tidal and wave energy, as well as geothermal energy from hot rocks underneath us. Bob Ward, thank you very much for your analysis. Thank you.